Hey guys, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique spaces. Behind me is an amazing container home that Nabil and I actually had the chance to stay in last night. And today we're gonna meet the owner, Nick, who built this container home, but also built an A-frame tree house that we featured on this channel last year. He's gonna take us on an in-depth tour of this new container home. So let's jump right in and meet Nick. I'm Nick, welcome to the Sea Container Cabin. My wife and I bought this property in 2010. It's just about six acres. The original intent for the property was to find a place where we could ski from and do some river play in the summer. We always wanted a place to get out of the city, to connect as a family, and to be in nature. We currently now have six small cabins on the property. It wasn't until 2017 when we started sharing on Airbnb. After the treehouse, I started the sea container cabin project. These particular containers were manufactured in 2007. As you can see by some of the dents in the sides, they definitely had a life of transporting things to and from. I think it's unique enough and I think is different enough that it will be worth it in the long run for my family and friends to use it and for guests to use it for short-term rental. All right, so the sea containers are made up of really just two containers, two high cube, 40 foot long containers. The guys that sold them to me cut one of the containers in half. So it's two 20 foot containers on the lower portion and then the one 40 foot cantilevered about 12 feet on each side. What's so cool about the containers is they're so strong that they can handle being hung over and they're still structurally sound. And it really creates a nice living situation because it's a covered entry. So you're not gonna be getting rained on when you're shuffling to open the door, get to your groceries or whatever, and a similar situation is in the back too. Experts on uh, shipping containers will notice that those locking mechanisms are not traditional. So the actual close of the 40 foot lower container is on the back side, but I wanted it to look like a shipping container on the front, so I had them weld on two handles in the front. One of the goals for the site was not to take any trees down and just to fit the Lego blocks in between as they're kind of situated now. We decided to do kind of a segmented foundation so as not to disrupt uh, the tree roots. We certainly didn't want to damage them because they're part of the beautiful scenery in the area. Power was already here, so we had a power pole brought over. The closed cell spray foam is really nice for these shipping containers because you don't want any space between the metal container and the insulation because it can condense and cause some moisture problems later. So we did a closed cell spray foam. So I had about 16 uh, door and window holes pre-cut and frames welded around them down at Mountain Container where I bought them from. And I would go down basically every week to kind of check on the build and make sure they were in the right place and whatnot. And they did a tremendous job. In the original drawing, I had a hot tub on the roof and there it is, a little two-person hot tub sitting on the roof to make this a unique, you know, kind of bucket list type of a place where hopefully guests will like to stay. So time frame for the build, it was pretty quick. We ended up taking delivery of the containers late September and we had our first guests in March. So roughly six months on the ground. I ended up paying 12 grand for technically three containers and it ended up costing about 250 grand. This is a quintessential ski cabin. So I left some of my old skis up here as kind of a splash of color, but also just to remind people that this is a ski cabin. Let's take a look inside. Welcome inside the sea container cabin. This was a really fun build for me. Sometimes when I'm sitting here alone or, or with friends or family, imagine like what possibly could be held in these sea containers as they traveled the seas. That was one of the reasons I was attracted to a build like this. So one of my favorite design features in any house is to have an open floor plan where you can cook dinner, sit and enjoy your family and friends and have a, an eating space, but also have a comfortable TV watching zone so you can watch TV while you cook. 
I decided to put in an electric fireplace. It emits a little bit of heat, but I love the new contemporary electric fireplace look. Um, you can also change it to any color you like. It's pretty trippy. <laughs> I'm thinking that a lot of guests will like to just sit here and zone out on the fire uh, like I do sometimes. As I've progressed in the cabins on the property, I've fallen in love with lighting. So anytime there's a plug and something I can hide an LED strip behind, it probably has one now. But in this case, uh, with enough planning, you can actually mud these LED light channels inside the wall. I think I saw the first couple versions of this on TikTok and then tracked a, a supplier in Florida who gave us these um, cool light sculptures. So there's one of these here and then there's one in each bedroom as well. This LED light can dim so it can be, you know, less strong if you want more of a subtle hint of light. Man, that's beautiful. I love it. The sculpture here in the wall, I really like how it defines the rooms. So you have really a separation here between living room and kitchen. When I designed the kitchen, I fell in love with these dark colors. One of the themes for the sea container cabin is this uh, lava rock theme, which you'll see throughout. But this is a, a true basalt tile made from uh, cooled lava. And I'm a geology major, so it's pretty dorky. But um, yeah, I've got lava, lava rock in many places. So the countertops are made by this company called Paperstone. They do a proprietary resin um, that is made up of recycled um, products. So another theme of the cabin was to go with, you know, use shipping containers, uh, sustainable product choices like the cork flooring and the paper stone countertops. I just love this, this wood line that cuts the dark color in the kitchen. And um, then with these brushed brass fixtures all throughout the, the cabin, I love how the colors play. We have an electric two burner cooktop. We have a convection microwave oven so you can bake pizzas, chicken nuggets, whatever you need. But we don't have a full traditional oven and we don't have a dishwasher. So to enjoy yourself while you're washing your dishes, there's a gigantic, probably 110 year old fir tree right outside the window. The containers themselves, I actually just purchased two 40 foot high cube containers, cut one of them in half. So the ground floor is two 20 foot containers. So you can see here, this is the midline of the ground floor. And this is where the two 20 foot containers meet right here. Container delivery is pretty intense. We used uh, forklift straps and it was an exciting day <laughs> to say the least. So for heating and cooling, we went with the mini split system. It has three interior units that heat and cool. And it's very straightforward, just a remote on the, on the wall and you can put your temperature so it um, you know, goes up or down, whatever you'd like. So we've got a little powder room bathroom here with one of the spa toilets from Chown Hardware. We've got the same countertop material from Paperstone and then a mirror from Chown Hardware floor to ceiling window inside there. Who knows if we'll have to change that with a blind if guests complain, but it's pretty, you know, it's the woods, but we'll see. So welcome to the backyard. So again, you got a nice covered space where you can do your barbecue, your grill, action. We picked Trex, it's made of 95% recycled uh, plastics, uh, which goes along with the sustainable theme. And I like the, the deck board choice here, just very angular. And I think that kind of matches the kind of Lego block, you know, feel that the containers have. You've got yourself a little fire pit zone here for your s'mores. We were fortunate enough to get uh, about six acres of, of land here. So this whole back portion behind the tree frame and the sea containers is our property. And it's a beautiful, really rainforest because of how much it rains here. A temperate rainforest with big leaf maple, fir trees, and really thick mossy cedar trees. It's a really nice place to just chill and take some deep rest. So one of my favorite parts of the cabin is the staircase. If you look here, each stair has its own LED light. And then we had to run a wire from each stair, of course, down to an electrical source. So the wires travel through the lumen of this central metal stringer here, and they continue down through the floor and then 
um, go back up to the transformer in the closet. But look at this sucker, seven eighths inch steel rods. Each one, each tread is, is uh, pierced with these rods and has a big nut on it to stabilize it and to help level. But man, it's just like a solid, beautiful, you know, piece of metal art. So I'm thrilled how this turned out. So we picked all the metal pieces from Everett Steel. Uh, we had a special uh, metal fab company thread all these long rods. It's so like strong, but elegant and simple. And you can use it to like do pull-ups if you want. You know, it's really strong. So at the top of the stairs here, we have another white birch uh, finished plywood wall. I really like this and used it in the tree frame, but um, often I just love the warm glow that it gives with soft lighting. This particular wall, I saw this video years ago on YouTube about doing black lines to transition the plywood. But instead of doing it on insulation, we installed the whole thing. I took the boards down, routered an eighth of an inch, a groove, and then put them back up and at the very end taped it off and spray painted these black lines in to give another artistic feature in the hallway here. So upstairs in the 40 foot container, we've got two bedrooms and a bathroom, but first I'll show you the bedroom down here. This is technically the guest bedroom. We have a super cozy short queen bed in here so that you can walk around. It's just a cozy spot for two people to sleep. You've got tremendous view of the forest and the trees and a big four foot by four foot skylight highlighting the the gorgeous trees and sky above. The skylight to me was a must. I found these dome skylights that were rated for snow coverage and whatnot. They really curb over the welded portion that was created, so no leaking so far. So <laughs> keep our fingers crossed. So in each bedroom, there's a little toothbrushing sink. Uh, my wife's a dentist, so it's very important that we get our hygiene uh, for our teeth uh, taken care of every night. So partly that, but also because there wasn't really room in the shower bathroom portion to put a sink. So we went with uh, a little sink in each bedroom. These mirrors have a dimmable feature as well. This one has a backlight dim and a front light dim. Pretty fancy. So another product choice to stay with the sustainable theme was we chose this cork flooring. And I didn't know, but I guess every nine years, the cork tree can be scraped and a full amount of that same cork can be harvested nine years later. So it's an extremely sustainable product choice and it's super soft on your toes and really nice. So we're gonna look at the master bedroom here. This is the master because it has a slightly longer cabin here and it has this little spot where you could store some stuff. So it's literally, I don't know, six feet longer, I guess. Again, has one of these cozy beds, but check out this view. Full forest, mossy Pacific Northwest trees. And again, we did the same exact skylight here for your stargazing pleasure. We did the, the same uh, LED light sculpture here. Uh, there's a small closet for your stuff. All right, so check out this shower hallway. Uh, we've got this tremendous steam shower with a bunch of lava rocks in it. And then down here is another toilet. This is one of my favorite parts of the cabin. Um, the floor is actually lava. We've got basalt tiles, one inch hex, down here on the floor, and you've got floor to ceiling forest view. And once you're in, you can sit here on this lava bench. It's a three inch thick piece of basalt. And then just for fun, I decided to put a two inch strip of basalt from floor to ceiling, just almost if it was like a pegmatite just shooting through the white marble. <laughs> And uh, I may have taken it too far with the lava, but I'm happy with how it turned out. So this is a full steam shower with the steam coming out down below. And I'll give you the pro tip here. When you are ready to steam and hot tub, you turn on the steam. It takes a few minutes to get it steamy in there. So you shut the door, head out, 
make sure some of your favorite tunes are on, and you hop in the hot tub. But this is truly a ski cabin. We're 30 minutes from Stevens Pass, so one of the reasons I put in the hot tub and the steam shower is to soak your bones after a hard day of skiing. And then get back over to the steam and check this baby out. Be careful, the floor is lava. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see a tour of the A-frame tree house also built by Nick, make sure you check out the link in the description and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.